This is an update on the status of the entanglement rig and a demonstration of how, how to use it. You'll notice that there are two ends arbitrarily labeled A and B that control the length of the rig. Each of these ends are need to be constrained to the characters. And I don't have any I don't have the Tommy or Toady character with any animation on it, so I have set up uh, some characters that I have from a previous project that I can use. And I have put a used the rivet script, just the same old rivet script we've been using for years, to constrain to place a locator inside each of these characters and to do that I selected a, a two edges on the surface that were approximately that would that would place the locator at approximately where the, the center mass of where, I, where the integument rig need, needs to be positioned so next then I, I put a locator on each of those characters so the next step then would be to turn this no selection back on to constrain each of these ends to those characters this is just a standard point constraint with no at, at Maya defaults and again to that character and then you can see what we get there is now the, the rig follows those two characters and the next step then would be to just move these curves around so they look look kind of natural like they're like they're following these curves will not be rendered in fact they're not even the curves that's that's doing anything in the scene they're just preview curves to give the animator an idea of where the eventual soft body curves will end up and there it's exactly where they will end up so it's, it's accurate so I'm not going to spend too much time doing this just to give you the idea that they need to be placed where, where they're placed is is where they will is where the procedural mesh network will will place the the elements of the entanglement and by the elements I'm, I mean these these elements also the each of these three go paths can be modified individually if that's if that's necessary so I just put them someplace and and since the the goals or the uh, the soft bodies won't be constrained exactly to these curves or we'll never actually find the curves exactly it doesn't matter they don't need to be super precisely placed in fact they don't even need to extend all the way to the character if, if it would benefit that way or and one or more can be disabled if less density is needed for a, for a, for a look of a shot so I'll select these curves all of these controllers and set a key there and then I'll move on down somewhere where it's up like that and just revisit these positions there if there's some surface center penetration I don't think it really matters it might but We'll just have to see how that works out.
anyway, I'm not an animator, so I don't even know how this stuff is supposed to be. This is what what is being adjusted here though is the primary movement. The secondary animation or secondary movement will be controlled by both the soft bodies and the and the mash procedure procedurals. So I'll set it select these controllers and set another key here and then just look at where we are. So we've got some moving through the ground there. That's no good. Kind of even things up. Maybe make them a little more interesting this way. And then I'll set a key there. Select the controllers and set a key. So this is what we have. Now if you select the entanglement group node, notice on the right there is a preview mode. So I'll turn that on. And this enables the soft bodies, the soft body curves. So if we hit play here, it doesn't work. It's just finicky finickiness of Maya that's a cause of that. So just to delete the turbulence field and then undo that delete and you'll notice that it starts working and what we're, what what's being done here is there needs to be a run up of the the soft bodies so when they start they don't jump and get crazy like that in the beginning so I'll go back and in order to to facilitate that run up, you need to disable the constraints on both ends of these nodes so it finds the curves and stabilizes itself within the turbulence field without the characters providing movement so it doesn't get lost. So I've disabled the, the, the weights on those constraints, the character constraints. And then I'll do a run up and I'll just let this run for a while to a place where it kind of looks good and say that that looks okay. Maybe uh, okay like that. Okay, and then the next step would be to select the particles for the goals. And then in the FX module, notice on the top left. In the FX module under Field Solvers, Initial State Set for Selected. Now then, we can go back and put those char there's character constraints back to one, so they have, so they run up. Now when we go back, the, notice that the uh, that the uh, entanglement paths are now uh, being impacted, being affected, affected by the turbulence field. So if we start here, you can see that that uh, that the paths are are, act, are, are dynamic. And the next step is to add the individual elements on, on top of these uh, paths. And I just want to give a quick demonstration of, of how that's done, or how, how that's going to work out hopefully. So uh, let's take a look at, I think it's this one. I don't care about that. So 
just imagine this path would be one of those three paths that was just generated in the previous scene. And so what you're seeing now here is path network or a mesh network of sprites that are that is generating one of those elements just a just an initial uh, mock-up of that and so if we take a look at how that renders you can see have to wait just a second. Okay. Let's see if we can play this. So, still a lot of work to do, uh, but that's the status of where the entanglement rig is right now. So, thanks.